for what you are doing in our church, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And Father, we pray that tonight in this service, Lord, that you would have your way. Lord, through every song that is sung, through every word that's spoken, Lord, that it all be done to bring glory and honor to your name, Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? He is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the
folks, I tell you what, our pastors went uh, to a lot of trouble this way. I don't know if you noticed this morning's message. Listen, Pastor, that was that was great. Amen. Can I get an amen? Yes. And folks, it is all to bring attention to what today is. Today is the day of Pentecost. You know, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I've visited around a few different churches and I've watched a few of them services on the internet. What I call Pentecostal churches are getting fewer and farther between in this day and time. And I want you to know that I am so thankful that he abides, and I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to give my testimony now, Pastor. But I am glad that I'm one of them. Let's sing that old song. Page 249. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame with the fire that fell at Pentecost which made them all aflame. It is burning now within my heart all glory to His name. And I'm glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 
The same God that walked on the water 2,000 years ago is still walking on the storms of life today. The same God that said, peace be still, the winds and waves still obey his command. And so tonight we're here today for one purpose, and that is to testify that he's still God nonetheless. He's never going to change. He's never going to leave us or forsake us, but he is always there. He is as close as the mention of his name. He is God, and he will always be God. Hallelujah. He's God on the platform. He's God back at the door. Pentecost Sunday, and I'm glad to be Pentecostal. There's a song that I heard some time ago. Maybe if we can get the courage, we may sing that here. But it says, I'm a Pentecostal. I'm not ashamed. Just read the book of Acts. We are still the same. Amen. We're Pentecostals today, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is more than just a name of a church. It's more than just a style of worship. But Pentecost is the spirit-filled life, and you're changed and renewed by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And I'm so thankful for his presence and so thankful for what God is doing in this church family. And uh, tonight, uh, you're in for a treat because, well, I gave you everything I had this morning, and I am not preaching but you are, and this is when we're going to have a little bit of a role reversal. I have asked nine people, 
and uh, thankfully they are all here tonight, and uh, they are going to be sharing with you about when they were filled with the Holy Ghost and what Pentecost means in their life. And I have asked each one of them, uh, when I call your name, if you will, just come on up and you can stand in front of the communion table and I'll give you the microphone and it's good and loud. That's why I'm holding it down. But you hold this microphone because those people that's watching online, we have people that's tuned in tonight. They need to hear your testimony. And this is your opportunity. Don't be ashamed because the world needs to hear the message of Pentecost. Amen. And so I'm going to ask Brother Cody right now. He's going to come and uh, he's going to share with you his testimony of being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and what Pentecost means in his life. Brother Cody, I'm so thankful for what Brother Cody does. He's a deacon here at our church and uh, he serves faithfully even in our van ministry. Brother Cody, the mic's yours. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember exactly the date, but I remember the night. Brother Roger Maddox was having a revival at Worcester, and Brother Jack, Jeff Maddox was doing the preaching when the Pentecost fell, fire fell on me. And it, to, in today's world, I'd hate to know that I had to rub shoulders with the world and not have it. Because like me and Kenny's talked several times, it's, it's tough going out there and dealing with people sometimes and not having what you need to deal with them. And my job, I get asked to pray quite a few times in front of pe quite a few people in some meetings and without the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't be able to do that because there's some people out there that will count how many dear lords you say. Ain't that right, Tina? <laughs> <laughs> but with his power, any, you can do anything, right. you know. And and Because in some of the meetings, they've asked guys to pray, and they would just, and not say nothing bad about them, but they just would not do it, you know. And I just say, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost and the power. And I thank him tonight for it, and I love him. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Coy Hill to come and share his testimony with you. And uh, adding to what Brother Cody said, uh, you know, he's our county commissioner in this region, and, and uh, I can relate to him since I have been uh, elected to office in Crawford County. I have been called upon to pray numerous times, and uh, they have nicknamed me the courthouse chaplain. Uh, because I can't tell you how many meals I have prayed over and how many uh, solemn assemblies out on our courthouse lawn. And uh, I just counted it an honor and a privilege that we have that opportunity that as a child of God, um, the community can call upon us to, to lead them. Brother Coy. All right. Pastor, you care if I step up here? I jotted down a few notes. Now that don't mean it's going to, what was, the, you said you were going to put a time limit on us. Oh, okay. And the only reason I did is because I didn't want to forget anything. Because when Pastor asked me about doing this, it was last week sometimes, maybe, maybe Thursday, somewhere right in there. And I said, well, you know, I could testify pretty easy about when and where I was when I got filled. But that second part, what it means to me, that's going to be a little bit more. I can elaborate a little bit more there. And the reason that I can is because I want to thank God for being filled with the Spirit. And I'll tell you something, we might ought to, a couple of us anyway, and a few more of us maybe, contact Jeff Maddox <laughs> and thank him because he was definitely involved the night that I was filled. And I don't know if anybody here has ever been around Brother Jeff Maddox, but I promise you one thing, if you get around him, you're going to know that he's full of the Holy Ghost. He may get around part of the time in a wheelchair. And I think, I honestly think that that is the enemy trying to neutralize him. But I want you to know that you're not going to be around him very long until you know that he is filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's what I'm talking about here this morning. I will never forget it was the Poto First Assembly. We was down, uh, pro I, I'm pretty sure we was down in the, uh, no it wasn't. We was already in the new building at the time where they're at now. And Jeff Maddox had got through. He couldn't, he couldn't just get up and sing a song without saying a few words. He might try, but he usually couldn't get that way. So he had got up and said a few words, and he was singing. And I remember the song that he was singing when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. It was sing a new song under the blood. I've been 
saved by the blood of the Lamb. Now, that's how it went. Sing a new song, under the blood. I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. And I, I just started praising the Lord and worshiping him. And I had sought the Holy Ghost for a good long while. And I know there are others here that sought the Holy Ghost for a long time. And I guess it was the hardest headed ones that took the longest to get filled. <laughs> but I want to know, I want you to know that I do thank God for filling me with the Holy Spirit at that time. And I told you all this morning, I said Holy Spirit then. I like to say Holy Ghost. That's just me. But I want you to know, folks, what I, what I think and what about it, the answer to, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we've got a few problems going on around us in this world, and our kids are involved in it, and a lot of them. And folks, I'm talking about things like homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, well, let's call it what it is, murder, murder. There are a lot of things going on in this day and time. Corrupt government. How many believes that we've got a corrupt government? Yes, we do. There is a, there's an answer. There is a remedy. Uh, school shootings. Folks, I'm, you can't just lay that off on because the guns are there. Because the guns used to actually be there. When I was, when I was growing up, We'd drive our pickups after we turned 16, was able to drive. We'd drive our pickups up there, and we'd have guns in the back glass of the truck that would sit there all day long. We may carry one. We may trade guns with one of our teachers. Carry it in, trade, carry the other one out. It wasn't because of the guns. I think we know what it was because. Other things, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. All kinds of addiction and all kinds of bondage and darkness. And now I'm going to tell you what the remedy is to all those things. A Holy Ghost filled church. A Holy Ghost filled deacons. A Holy Ghost filled teacher. Holy Ghost filled preacher. I firmly believe that that would be the answer to 90.9% .9 of the ills that we have going on around us every day. And folks, I don't know about you, but I want to. I want to. I want to try to do something about it. Yes, the the Word of God says that things will wax worse and worse as time goes by. But you know what? That's the world. We live in a different group. We're cut from a different cloth. We we don't have to, we don't have to go that route. And I tell folks, I'm telling you right now, I don't aim to go that route, and I don't aim for my children to follow me anywhere else or my grandchildren that's coming up. Because I hope that they're in lockstep with me and following me. And I'm ready to take on that responsibility of leading and guiding them in the way that they should go. Folks, the, along with these Holy Ghost filled preachers and teachers, John said, there's one that cometh after me. Whose shoes that I am not worthy to even reach down and unloose. And it says, yes, he'd baptized with water. But he said, this one was going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that is what we need today. Jesus himself said, you shall receive power. You shall receive power to be a witness unto me and to all the earth. I want you to know, I may get my Sunday school lesson mixed in with some of this because we had quite a lesson this morning. But I'm, you shall receive power. And I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about Holy Ghost power. If you ain't got it, you can have it. Nothing but the name of the Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. You know what, the, even, what, what did the demons say when there was a, a group of people that tried to cast out demons? And what did them demons say? They said, well, now Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Amen. And what did they do? They beat them up. They beat them up and sent them on their way. You know why they did? Because they didn't have the power. They didn't have the power that I'm talking about here. Folks, this is what it means to me. How do, you, how do I get it? How do you get it? I know we talked about it this morning in Sunday school. The 120 did not go up to the upper room to pray for salvation. A lot of people will tell you today that you get a measure, that you get the infilling of the Spirit when you're saved, and that's it. That ain't it. That ain't just it. 
there is a subsequent, as Pastor calls it, event that can take place in your life. And that is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there is one thing that's always there. The initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues. Folks, folks, if we lose that Pentecostal experience that I'm talking about, then we've lost. And not only, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to be hard enough to make it with it. And we're going to leave our children without it? I don't think so. We need to show them what it is. What will be the evidence that you've got it? I've done mention it. Speaking in tongues. That's going to be it. And folks, I'll tell you what. Old Dr. So-and-so, uh, I think Brother uh, Brankle used to call him Dr. Sounding Brass. <laughs> he might say, well, if, a, if all you ever do is speak in tongues, then your understanding is gonna, not going to be fruitful. Big deal. I'm going to tell you something. It ain't usually my understanding that gets down and needs refreshed. It's my spirit. And if I am speaking in a heavenly language, and I realize and I know through the word of God that I'll be speaking of the wonderful works of God. That's what it means to me. Let's not, let's not just get cold and, and grow cold and further and further away from the spirit. But let's, let's grow more fervent in spirit as we see that day approaching. That's all I've got. Hey man, I did, I he, he just ready to preach here. I'll just turn you loose one night, brother Coy. <laughs> Sister Pam Kathy is coming right now to share her testimony of being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, I certainly will not follow you anymore. But what I have to say is uh, I was raised Catholic. We believed in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We called him the Holy Ghost. And I met a friend, and she was from the Methodist Church. She started telling me about this little prayer group, and they, they speak in tongues. And so I went and asked my priest, pastor, what about that? And he said, yeah. And he said, there's a Catholic uh, prayer meeting going on in another little town further away. And they've all got the Holy Ghost. So he said, go there. So I went there. And we had a really wonderful time. And then it came time that he, the priest that led the prayer meeting said, do you want, anybody want the Holy Ghost? Well, I raised my hand. And he said, okay, come over here and sit in this chair. And they started praying. And he said, now just, just lift your hands and, and praise the Lord. And I thought, well, I don't even know what that means, really. I mean, he said, say, hallelujah, praise God. I said everything he said. And in a little bit, I thought my tongue is getting thick. It's not, it's not working just right, you know. And just all of a sudden, something grabbed a hold, and it just flew out of my mouth for the longest time. It was so fast and furious that I couldn't even take a breath hardly. And that's how I got the Holy Ghost. And I, was, I am so thankful of the things I've learned. Uh, there's, there's just a, it just is the difference between, uh, like one person told me a long time ago, the people that used to drive cars before power steering. Does anybody in here know like what that was like? Well, once you get the Holy Ghost, the steering through life is so much easier on your journey. You go through everything that anybody else goes through, but you still. You know have the power to overcome it and I know when I pray in tongues that I'm praying the perfect prayer sometimes I don't know what to pray for people especially the man that's in the White House and all these people I know what I'd want to pray but that wouldn't be God and I just you know when I lift him up I know that those people are unsaved and they do need salvation so when I pray for them I pray in, in the Holy Ghost because I think that I'm getting through the way that the Lord would have me do it. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. When you pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, that's when the Holy Ghost is praying through your voice, through your vocal cords, and he's praying through your heart and soul, the perfect will of God. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Shelley Trotter to come 
And uh, I'm thankful to have her part of this church. She's been in this church for a very long time. I guess most of your life or all your life. And uh, she is very faithful in our children's ministry. And uh, she is our children's pastor and doing a great work on Wednesday night. Sister Shelley. Well, I'm kind of like Cody. I don't remember the exact day that I got filled, but I do remember where it was one night at youth. They was asking if anybody wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I raised my hand, and so I got filled one night. Um, I think it was back there in the fellowship hall. Um, one night when we had youth, and um, like some of the others have said, it's like not a day goes by that you don't need it, you know, for for some reason or, or another. Like, and it helps you if sometimes you don't know. I don't know how to pray, but the Holy Ghost will help you pray, and it's been with me through high school, um, through my whole life, especially when. Um, we went to Kansas, and um, I said I wasn't going to cry. But um, there was times I would be out in the field or gone. It was just just me then. And I've told this to a lot of kids through children's church and youth. You can't live your salvation off your mom or dad or your grandpa, grandpa. There was no one up there with me but me. Amen. And I thank God that they raised me in a church, a Pentecostal church. So I had to find a church of my own. And the Holy Ghost helped me with all of that. And he helped me every day. And there was times, when, especially like I said, when I was gone in the field or other times, especially when he went overseas for six months. When you know your spouse is going over there and you don't know if he's going to make it back alive. That was one of the times that I really, I don't know what people do without it sometimes. But it really helped me through that difficult time. It's helped me, you know, like I said, through the whole life. And there's times, especially working at school, it's hard sometimes. And you go to bed and you just pray for them little ones. And the Holy Ghost helps me through that and helps you pray. And he, like I said, I just don't know what some people do without it. It gives you the power and the strength, like you said, to do everyday activities, everyday life. And it helps you to pray and it gives you strength. And I just thank God for um, the Holy Ghost. Get the Holy Ghost. Sister Wilma, can you come up? Aren't you enjoying this tonight? Yes. It's good to hear what God is doing in everyone's life. Well, now mine will be very unusual. I turned 79, my birthday. When I was nine years old, me and a bunch of my friends was you know, kids used to play church. Well, we were playing church, but it got to be real. That day I got filled with the Holy Spirit, just us kids playing church. That's been 70 years ago. And the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost has been with me every day since. I've been through a lot of things down through these 79 years. But God has been there. The Holy Spirit has led and guided my life and my kids' life with Bill. I just love the Lord, and I thank him, and I praise him for all the goodness that he has done for me down through the years. And, and for that Holy Ghost, I couldn't have went through a lot of things when we lost our daughter if I hadn't had the Holy Spirit to comfort me during that time. But God was with us, and I just love and praise him. Brother Bill, I know I didn't contact you earlier in the week, but I want you to come, and I want you to come testify for us. Uh, I know every preacher has a testimony. And uh, Brother Bill and Sister Wilma, I know they served in ministry for many years down at Muse. And uh, I want Brother Bill to come and testify. Testify, preach, do whatever you want to do. Well, uh, I want you to know that I was born in a home 
Well, probably some of the first words I heard was Jesus. My mother had been a Christian ever since I was born, I'm quite sure. Raised around it. But folks, that's not good enough. <laughs> I remember in a revival that I realized that mama couldn't take me to heaven and dad sure couldn't. And God reached into my heart. I gave my heart to him. And sometime later, it was filled with the Spirit. God blessed me with enough spiritual and common sense to let me marry a redhead, which has been a wonderful companion. Wonderful daughters. God has been so great to me. But most of all, down through the years, as I would listen and watch the news and wonder what the next move would be. I had a peace in my heart. I had an assurance that God was in control of Tamara and I was in God's hand. Folks, I want you to know the God that you serve will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. I look back over the years and I thank God for the mother that brought me to church and for a mother that prayed and brought dad in and God touched his heart and he served the Lord and did a lot for the Lord and I thank the Lord for the Christian family. I thank the Lord for this church. I thank the Lord that down in my heart there is an assurance, there is root, there is confidence that Jesus Christ is coming soon and that I'm going to go with him and I'm praying for my family and what many of them have turned their hearts to you. I want you to know, folks, uh, this church here is the root of my life. Since about six years old, the bigger part of my life has been on a pew in this church and, and sometimes outside under uh, in the back of the church when dad would have to talk to me by hand. How many of you have ever been talked to by hand? It works. And how God has moved, and I've seen the Spirit of God. I've seen men and people, uh, women's lives change. All these things. I want you to know that God is faithful. He is very, very faithful to His Word. Read the Word. Hide it in your hearts. Uh, for the Word of God will guide you down the pathway of life. Uh, we're headed home, folks. We're almost there. I'm thankful to be here tonight, brother. <laughs> I didn't mean to take this time. <laughs> Ain't it good <laughs> to feel and to know that you're right with God? There is a peace the world does not give and the world can't take it away. So tonight I would admonish you, I would like for you to do as folks have to do. Get on your face. Open your heart. Look toward Heaven, put your eyes up on the goal. Walk straight, walk strong, and keep your soul full of the Holy Spirit and let God in His mercy guide you and He'll not lead you astray. Amen. Folks, we're almost there. Hang on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bill. Hallelujah. Sister Verda, I want to ask you to come and testify. I know she has many testimonies. Well, I've been saved most of my life, but I got, I received the Holy Ghost at my home church at Bixby First Assembly, and Bill Watkins was my Sunday school teacher back there, and I don't know if Bill and Wilma were there the night I got the Holy Ghost, but I was a single mom, and when I got the Holy Ghost, I received power and I needed it for instruction. I needed the Lord, everything I could get from him. The Bible says that he is our comforter. And I can tell you, he has comforted me many times. And he said he will bring all things to our remembrance. That's after we put it in our mind, that Bible in our mind. He will bring that back. But I think the most amazing thing about the Holy Ghost to me is when I'm faced with a situation and I don't know how to pray and I can use my prayer language and God could take that prayer and meet a need and 
just let the peace of God come over me. I just wouldn't want to be without the Holy Ghost. And Coy, please let me tell what you told this morning. He said, people ask, do we have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? And I think it was Sister Wilma's mom said, I wouldn't want to go to Walmart without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Verda. Sister Sonia Pierce. I've asked Sister Sonia to come. And uh, she sent her testimony by text to Sister Alyssa. And Alyssa was telling me about it. And I said, we've got to have Sister Sonia come and share her testimony of when she was filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Sister Sonia. Okay, mine is different because I was not raised Pentecostal. So I didn't know about speaking in tongues. But I had been coming to this church since I was 17. And at 19, I went to see Otha Falkenberry. Now, you have to realize there was a hunger in me. I always wanted more. I wanted more of God. I knew there was something I needed more of. And when I went to see her, they were already told this, um, she said, yeah, I have a seat at the table. I sit at the kitchen table. And she was busy, and she had her, you know, working on stuff, and she was talking to me, and she had her back to me. And I asked her, I said, do you have to have this uh, Holy Ghost to go to heaven? And she said, oh, I'd hate to try to make heaven without it. I hate to try to do anything without it. Okay. This is how I perceived it. I'm 19. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go to hell if I don't get this. I've got to have this. There's already an urgency in me. And I realize now, thinking back on it, the Holy Ghost was leading me and guiding me. He led me to Othel's house. He gave me a hunger. It was really always on my mind. At that time, I worked at Hamlin's Manufacturing. And uh, I remember I would walk from there down to the street to catch my ride home. And I can remember the Holy, I didn't know what it was. The Holy Ghost was just, it was constantly, he was constantly with me, drawing me, drawing me. And so, Otha Falkenberry gave me all this scripture to read, all the scripture about baptism in the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. I read it all, and I remember I thought, ah, this is in here. This is in here. The Word of God says it's in here. It is real. I want this. And it was on a Wednesday night in the old sanctuary. Brother Parker was the preacher. And after the sermon, he said he gave an invitation for anybody who wanted to be filled with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I remember thinking, I can't go up there because so-and-so and so-and-so are sitting behind me, and what will they think? So I didn't go. So he gives the dismissal prayer. While he's giving the dismissal prayer, I thought, oh, I've missed it. And I said, Lord, if you want me to have that Holy Ghost, please let him ask one more time. And then he says, Brother Parker says, I feel impressed to give the invitation for anybody that wants to be filled with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. One more time. I thought, well, here I go. So I came to, went to the altar and I knelt down. Now, I had never prayed out loud. I wasn't sure what to do. But I heard one woman saying, glory, glory, glory. I don't know. But Othel was right there beside me, and she said, thank you, Jesus. And I thought, yes. And I never raised my hands to pray. And I remember I bowed my head, and I just said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I raised my hands, and I got filled, and it was whoo, like a powerful wind. It was just awesome. And I can tell you right now, I would not want to live without being full. I got filled. I want to stay full. To me, the Holy Ghost is everything. I never know really what to pray about. I may think I do. But God knows, the Holy Spirit knows, and I can pray in my heavenly prayer language. And also, there's been times in my life that have been really bad. All of us have that. And your, your heart's breaking, and you just don't know what to do. You can kneel down, and I can pray. And the one thing I know is I can just tell Jesus, because Jesus is who gives the answers. And just thanking, and thanking and praise his name. We cannot praise God adequately in English. I cannot thank God adequately in my known tongue. The Holy Spirit does it so much better. The word better doesn't even exist. It's the ultimate. I wouldn't take anything for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I'm amazed that he filled me. I'm amazed he filled me. This is awesome. Just me, he filled me. And I'm thanking. 
Thank you, Sister Sonja. Sister Carla, would you come and testify? Sister Carla and Brother Kenny, they are such a blessing to our church. Sister Carla has been leading our youth ministry, and God's doing some great things in this ministry. Sister Carla. Isn't this awesome? I mean, getting to hear. Guys, this is so encouraging. And I'm so thankful that there's so many people that are out in the web that can click on this and hear testimonies because um, it's so important for us to hear other people's testimonies and be encouraged by it. I am learning so much about each each testimony that's given tonight and thinking and, and relaying that to my life. Um, something that I tell the kids, well, I say kids, something I tell the youth, they would probably flog me for that, but anyway, is... When we enter into worship, I encourage them to literally take a physical step. And when they take a step, they are entering into their personal closet. They are entering into a space that's just for them and God. The night that I was filled, I turned to this side because it was that building over there but it was on this side and I was standing right about the end of the altar and it was Brother Ming who was the pastor and um, people were being filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, you could just see the evidence and I did not question God. I did not understand it. I just, I'd never experienced that. I loved God. I worshiped God. I was a Christian. I truly had sought in my heart. Um, I felt like I had truly sought to be filled with the Holy the Holy Ghost before, but it had not happened up until that point. And that night, when I was standing there, I, I took that step and I said, "God, everything else is out. Everything else is out. It's just you and I. I want." just your realness. I want, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're experiencing because I have not experienced. I knew they were being filled, but I had not experienced it. So when I say I don't know what's going on, I knew that part of it, but I didn't know the depth of it. That night, as I entered into worship, literally, I moved my hands and took a step, erasing everything around me. And it was that night that I was filled with the Holy Spirit. When when that happened, I knew that I knew that I knew that I had the Holy Spirit indwelling. And guys... There's so much, like Koi has talked about, like each one of them have talked about, there's so much of the world that tries to come in and attack us. Why it took me as long as it did, I don't know. I I don't know. I can't answer that. I know it, I just know it did. And it was something that the the devil would use against me and say, and you know, he's, he's always there. He's always there saying, you can't do this. This isn't for you. It, you're not good enough. I mean, you, you can't even, I can't even think of everything he would use against me. But guys, when I took that step and entered into worship and blocked out anyone and everyone around me, the times of trouble that we go through here on earth, my goodness, but God... But God, in those moments when you want to give up, when you want to, when your flesh says, I'm tired, when your flesh says, I can't do this anymore, when your flesh says, I just want to quit, I just want to sit down, kind of like an old Jenny we used to have, she literally would sit down on you. That Holy Spirit comes in, and I'm telling you, you talk about like that mighty rushing wind that pastor was talking about this morning, comes in and you have that hope. You have the strength to take that other step. You have the strength, and that's my desire for our youth. Guys, pray for our youth like Koi talked about. They have so much against them. It breaks my heart when 
they're giving their prayer request. And then whenever I go and I see things and they, they come to me in private and tell me things that are going on. Guys, these, these youth are dealing with so much more than we ever dreamed. We can't imagine who would have ever thought we would be seeing the commercials that we're seeing now in promoting the things that they're promoting now. And this is what our kids are dealing with. They need this Holy Ghost. They need this power to overcome all the attacks that come against them. So that night, I told God, I don't doubt you. I really don't doubt them. I just don't understand it. But that night I knew. That night I knew. And I just thank God for that. I thank God that, like you said, Sister Sonia, that even me, because Satan's always there trying to tear you down and tell you you're not good enough, trying to tear you down and saying you're not enough. But God, our kids need this. So thank you for sharing your testimonies. Pastor. Thank you, Sister Carla. Brother Kenny, would you come and share your testimony with us? Thank you. Well, um, I, don't, I don't remember who said it now, but uh, they said that their testimony was a little different because they wasn't raised in that. Well, no, it wasn't a little different, whoever it was. I don't even remember now, but, oh, S Sister Sonia. But I was raised, in, in, and I'm going to go out on a limb even though we're on... Facebook Live because I, I'd never hurt anyone's feelings or anything and I'm thankful for the way that I was raised. I saw my dad drive past a cow that was having trouble having a calf and left her because he said it's church time. He said God will take care of that. So I'm thankful for my upbringing, but I was raised in a very, very conservative Baptist church. Um, first time I took Carla there, she clapped and everybody looked at us. I mean, I, that's how conservative that church was. And uh, so imagine when uh, I was going through things in my life and my life I felt like was a wreck and, and I met a Pentecostal woman. And I started looking for something more. And I, I, I was, but again, you can imagine my confusion. And I, I was in this church and people were speaking in tongues and they were doing all this stuff that was so different. And, and uh, a testimony for another time, I, I, I tested that out. You know, I, I asked God to show me if it was real or if it wasn't. And uh, there was a, a person that uh, I asked God, is that, if that's real, Lord, I, I want to know it. Because I was seeking God. I was looking for more and more and more of him. And he showed me that it wasn't at that time. And I thought, okay. It's not real. And about that time in that church, there was a message in tongues from the other side of the church. And it was a gentleman that never said anything. Hardly ever talked. And I thought, chill bumps went all up and down my back. And I said, Lord. In my mind, I said, Lord. I believe that was real. And about that time, another gentleman in the other side of the church in the back gave the interpretation. Again, it was someone that did not within themselves, would not have ever spoken out loud. So I knew by that that it was real. I knew 
that it was real. And so I started seeking the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I started asking all kinds of questions to a lot of different people because I had no clue what it was all about. And I was asking question after question, and I'm sure that my pastor at the time and some of my friends got tired of me asking all those questions. But I started seeking the filling of the Holy Spirit. And every Sunday, it seemed like I would try my best to have that in my life because I could see the evidence of the difference it made in people in their lives and the way they acted and I've always had trouble acting right okay but as I would go to church and, and I felt like one, one Sunday I felt like wow that was so close that Sunday morning and I went back to church Sunday night and I had on my mind, I was like, I'm going to, boy, I'm going to be the first one to the altar tonight. Because the pastor was preaching on the Holy Spirit and different things that were going on and, and uh, in the church and all that. And I just knew that he was going to ask that night uh, who wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, the service went on, and at the end, and we sat right over on that side in that church as well, about the second row, about the same deal. And the, the pastor asked all the deacons of the church to come to the front, and, and they were lined up just across the front. And, and I remember, and I can't tell you the date or anything about it, but I remember so well, he said, there's people in here that have things in their life that are causing them problems. And if you do, and you want these deacons to pray for you, you come forward. Well, I'm going to tell you, I just told you I have trouble acting right. But I was aggravated. I thought, why did he not ask for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Why did he change everything tonight? And I was aggravated and I was sitting there and that same little Pentecostal woman went, are you going to go ask for prayer for and name the certain situation that was going on in my life? And I, boy, I was aggravated at her too. I, I thought, well, I said, yeah, I guess. Just about like that. So, so I started to the front, and I, there was one of the deacons that I really felt like I had a connection with, and I started toward him, them, and he and his wife, and there was someone who went right in front of me and went right up to them. I mean, just cut me off. I thought, I'm about to go sit down. And, and when I thought that, and I thought, well, that same little Pentecostal woman that nudged me ain't going to be happy with me. And, uh, and I did need prayer for that situation. And there was second from the end on this side, the deacon and his wife were right there, and there was no one there. And I thought, how embarrassing is that for me to wait? So I walked up there to them. I knew them, but not well. And he said to me, what can we pray for you about? So I started, I started telling him about the problem that I had and the things that was going on in my life that I did need prayer for. And that lady... She was sitting on the, the platform was pretty high and she was sitting on that platform and she stood up and she said, I'll never forget it. She said, that wasn't what you come for. She said, you came to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thought, 
wow, she has read my mail. And immediately I went to crying. I just started crying. And she said, Holy Ghost is going to fill and fill you tonight. She said, are you willing to stay as long as it takes? I said, yes, I am. I said, because I was aggravated that the altar call wasn't that. And she said, oh, but the Holy Spirit knows. And they prayed for me, and I'll never forget that feeling that I had, and I can't even explain it. But I do know this. I began to think I'd never speak English again. When I started speaking in tongues, I just kept, it just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. And, and that's my story of how I was filled. God knows right where you're at. He knows right what, exactly what you need. If she hadn't had the Holy Spirit, she wouldn't have been on, on the same page with him. But God knows exactly what we need and exactly when we need it. And I was in field, and what it means to me is you're looking at a guy that, if I, I took speech class in college like three or four different times, and I would keep it, and I had to have it to graduate, okay, from Carl Albert, and I would keep that speech class until such time that they assigned the first speech. And I knew I was going to have to get up in front of people and say something. And I'd drop that class. Because I was not about to do that. That's how bashful I was. That's where I was at. That was all the things that I didn't think I could do. But like Brother Cody and I were talking earlier, after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, it didn't bother me to tell anybody about it. It didn't bother me, because, but that was the power of God living within me. That's what it means to me. Without the Holy Spirit, whew, wow, I don't know what I'd do. So many times I fail at different things, and so many times the Holy Spirit says, all right, Kenny, you're going to have to be quiet on this one. Or, all right, Kenny, you need to speak up on this deal. And just recently, well, in the past few couple of years, there's been some times that uh, where I work that uh, there was a, a death uh, with one of the workers, and, and they asked me, to step up, step out in a sail ring in front of all these people that are cow people and, and cowboys and farmers and ranchers. And I had no clue where they were with their salvation. But they asked me, they said, will you say a few words and then pray? And Cody... I told them a day or so ahead of time, I told them, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. He said, Reverend, will you do that? You know, kind of in a joke. I said, yeah, yeah, I will. I wasn't going to say no, but I'm going to tell you, if I hadn't had the Holy Spirit, I wanted to run. I wanted to run so far away from there. I was so nervous that I couldn't even eat lunch that day, Pastor. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit speak through me. That's what the Holy Spirit does for me. Without him, whoo, I'm not going to say I couldn't do anything, but I couldn't do a third of what little I do without him. That's what he means to me. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Can we stand together all across the sanctuary? This service has been such an encouragement to each one of us here tonight. And just as Sister Sonia was saying that when she was seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it was her prayer. She wanted more. She wanted more.
I don't know how many times I have heard in revival services the evangelists would say, do you want more of Jesus? Do you want more of that anointing? Do you want more of that power? If that's your prayer tonight, you may have been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost for many, many years. But if you're here tonight and you say, I want more of Jesus, I want more of his power, I want more of his blessing, I want you to get up out of your seat and make your way across this front and let's lift our hands toward heaven and let's give God our best praise and let's worship him. And as you feel led to pray for one another, I encourage you to do so. Maybe there's somebody here tonight that you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you need more of Jesus. You need more of his power. And let's pray together and let's intercede with one another tonight. In Jesus' name.
bless your name, Jesus. Lord, I pray that tonight you would go with us, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct in all that we do, Lord, that you would continue to lead us by your spirit, Jesus. Lord, that our lives may be changed forever, Lord, to be a vessel that you can use to build the kingdom of God. And Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord one more hand clap and a shout of praise? He is worthy.